Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. You can follow me on Twitter, at CameronMCNZ. But right now, what I wanted to talk to you about was some of the top Joe Rogan podcasts that I think programmers and software developers will really, really enjoy. Now, number five on that list, it's James Damore. Now, James Damore was the guy that wrote the Google Diversity Letter. He took some diversity training. They asked him, a software engineer, stress the word engineer, for some feedback. And being the engineer, he went and he sought out scholarly articles, sought out a variety of well-documented facts, and provided some insights on the state of diversity why there are diversity issues in Silicon Valley, and also what we could do about it. Unfortunately, his well-documented facts did not comply with the woke philosophies of human resources at Google, and he was unceremoniously fired. Anyways, this caused a, a a great deal of, of turmoil for him, and it you know really pulled back the covers on on kind of the, the immoral things that companies like Google were, were doing in the name of diversity. So this is a really great interview. Now, James Damore is an engineer, software developer, programmer. He's not an international speaker. So, you know, you don't quite get the, the oratory and the rhythm that you get with him that you might get from, I don't know, a Jordan Peterson or something like that. Uh, but the content here is key. So I highly recommend this. Uh, anybody who wants to go to battle with woke human resources departments, uh, this is a, a listen for you. Now, have you ever lost a billion dollars? Well, uh, one of the co-founders of Reddit did. Um, but don't feel too bad for him. He, uh, the co-founder, sold out his share of Reddit for, I think it was $10, $20 million to Condé Nast. And then Reddit really blew up, and I think it's valued at $3 billion now. Um, but I don't think you need to uh, feel bad for Alexis here. Uh, Joe Rogan 484, one of the earlier podcasts, that's for sure. Uh, don't feel bad for him at all. Uh, he's not uh, collecting social welfare. He's not on any food, food lines. <laughs> he's doing really well. But the great thing about this was it's, it's just... You know, you get to hear about a software developer with an idea, putting together a startup, doing the work, seeing an idea kind of come to fruition, having that, you know, MVP application going live. And then, you know, you kind of just hear the excitement that there was when, you know, random people started posting things and, and putting things into their site and, and things started to take off. And if you've ever, you know, wanted to work on a, a startup or had an idea or, um, you know, anything like that, I mean, this is just a, a really great story. So I think this one is one software developers will really enjoy. Also, Hugo Martin, creative director of Doom Eternal. Uh, this was 1441. This one went up fairly recently. Uh, Joe Rogan's a, a big first-person shooter video game fanatic. So he's had a couple of people from ID Software in there. And, you know, just listening to Hugo Martin talk about software development, you know, I think there's one point where he says, you know, I effing love software development. You know, a stick of dynamite and a crowbar couldn't take me away from being a programmer and it's just that kind of energy and excitement and love for the craft that you hear in in this particular podcast and you know maybe software developers don't hear that too often so uh, I like this one not only because you get to hear about what goes into software development and game development uh, but you actually hear somebody speak that, that really enjoys the process. Number two is the Twitter roundtable. Uh, Joe Rogan talked took a, a lot of flack for his first interview with Jack Dorsey, uh, CEO of Twitter, I believe. Uh, he said that he didn't uh, hold his feet to the fire quite as much as he should have. So there's a subsequent round table where they brought Tim Pool in. He's a journalist and a, a human rights, freedom of speech advocate. And uh, we also had uh, Vijaya. Uh, she is policy director, safety director, something like that with Twitter. And they talked policy. And so this was interesting to me because, you know, not only is it about 
us as developers about the software that we write and the impact that it can have on society. And certainly Twitter has impacted society, you know, as, as much as any other social media platform out there but also what goes into the decisions that they make. You know, we say they've got Kathy Griffin in there and she has held up pictures of her holding the an effigy of a decapitated head of the president. She's also doxxed teenagers and she's allowed on there. Um, then you get somebody like uh, Alex Jones from Infowars, who certainly is... Uh, not perfect by any means, but I'm telling you, he was the only side stream media personality that I know of that was regularly talking about the sexual abuse of young women on Epstein Island. Nobody else had the guts to talk about that. He was the only one I heard talking about it regularly. And a man like that is banned from all social media platforms. So, you know, uh, that's a pretty tough square to, to circle as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, how do they make those decisions? What go into it? What balances do they have to strike? They are a private corporation, so they don't have to follow the rules of freedom of speech. But at the same time, uh, you know, it is one of the, you know, major platforms for people to share ideas. So, you know, they have to respect it to a certain degree. So it's interesting to hear them talk about the balances that they try to strike when managing that. Now, I would say this is my all time favorite Joe Rogan interview. It's John Carmack of ID Software fame. And, you know, in this, he just, he's a laid back guy. He's not, you know, overly energetic. Um, but when he goes in and energetic, I mean, he's not, you know, he's, he's not a, a speaker. He's a software developer. He's a CEO. Um, but, you know, when he starts talking about software development and those long nights and, and getting an idea and getting up early in the morning and working on it and and just loving the craft and talking about how he can go away from his family and, you know, just sit and program and program and program and be engaged and love it and having no regrets about the career that he's chosen um, you know this one was really inspirational um, and of course John Carmack uh, ID software that's uh, what doom quake um, is it Wolfenstein I could mean a whole bunch of very very popular pieces of software um, but him talking about the development of that software, um, you know, where the ideas came from, how those ideas evolved, the different 3D virtual engines, graphic engines that he's worked on over the years, and really just the passion that he has for, for programming and how that keeps him engaged as an individual. You know, I really, really enjoyed this particular podcast. I think that any software developer will really enjoy it. And there you go. Those are my five top Joe Rogan podcast. I'd say uh, give him a download. Um, you know, he doesn't talk too much about psilocybin mushrooms, MMA or DMT in any of those videos. But I mean, I'm sure he touches on it as he usually does. But even if you're not a Joe Rogan fan, even if you're not a fan of mixed martial arts, I think those are our five Joe Rogan podcasts that you'll really enjoy.